Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse explains how XRP can reach $589. Why is he thinking about an IPO? Is the XRP boom about to come? Why is the commission further delaying the case? Stay tuned till the end of the video to find out. But first, we are giving away 25 XRP at the end of the month to one random subscriber to start on their XRP journey. All you need to do is to like the video, subscribe and comment your thoughts on XRP in the comments section. Welcome back XRP Army. Let's grow the XRP Lab community by pressing the like button and subscribing to this channel to stay updated at all times. The Chief Executive Officer of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, has referred to transparency as an essential virtue in the cryptocurrency sector. Following the recent meltdown of the UST stablecoin, the CEO said, in an interview with Fox Business News, that it is now even more crucial to have clear operations. The UST unpegged itself from the dollar on May 9, which sent the whole Terra ecosystem crashing down with it. Investors went into a state of fear as a result of the crisis, and many observers questioned whether or not other stablecoins would go through a similar situation. It has been made clear by Garlinghouse that he is not personally engaged with the leading stablecoin Tether. On the other hand, he pointed out the fact that the crypto business as a whole may do better if it offered more transparency about its many financial frameworks. That would serve to reassure Tether customers that the cryptocurrency in fact is backed by dollars. He used Ripple and XRP as an example of transparent actors in the market, adding that the two have done their best to be the adult in the financial sector. He also said that other companies in the industry should follow their example. Since the beginning, Terra has portrayed UST as an algorithmic stablecoin that is governed by the law of supply and demand. This has been the case since the company founding. The sudden collapse of the company, on the other hand, portrayed an entirely different image and tainted the company reputation in a way that is likely beyond repair. The cryptocurrency industry is now receiving more attention from government authorities than it ever has before. Recently, the head of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, Gary Gensler, issued a warning to investors that the decline of other crypto assets might be similar to that of Terra. Meanwhile, despite Du Quan denials, South Korea National Tax Service has fined Terra $78 million for tax evasion. Additionally, Garlinghouse is now in Davos Klosters, Switzerland, where he is participating in the annual World Economic Forum. The event started on Sunday, May 22, May 26, according to the information provided on the organization official website. The forum welcomes a variety of global leaders who debate the current state of the globe as well as forge partnerships and policies for potential future applications. Garlinghouse said that he was there because he wanted to share Ripple procedures in order to secure the company reputation for being transparent. The CEO said that in addition to addressing real-world challenges, blockchain technology improves the efficiency of cross-border payments and lowers the expenses of sending money internationally. When El Salvador decided to recognize Bitcoin as a kind of legal cash a year ago, the country cited similar reasons. On the other hand, Ripple and its officials, including Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, continue to communicate with the Security and Exchange Commission on the legal dispute that has been going on for over a year and a half. In the most recent proceedings, the regulatory agency said that it was unable to authenticate or refute the name of its former CEO Bill Hinman in his renowned address on securities from 2018. What do you think? When will XRP get out of this lawsuit? Furthermore, according to CEO Brad Garlinghouse interview with CNBC, Ripple would investigate the feasibility of an initial public offering after its lawsuit against the Securities and Exchange Commission has been resolved. The statements made by Garlinghouse come in the midst of a slump in the price of cryptocurrencies, which has wiped billions of dollars worth of value off the market. According to CoinGecko, XRP has had a decline that equals 42% over the course of the last 30 days. The value of equities tied to cryptocurrencies has also taken a beating. Shares of Coinbase have dropped by 75% so far in 2018, while those of Robinhood, another company that facilitates trading in digital currencies, have fallen by roughly 50%. In spite of this, according to Garlinghouse, the company is continuing to expand. He said that the volume for their on-demand liquidity product, which is used for making cross-border payments and employs XRP, hit $8 billion in the first quarter of this year, which is an increase from the $1 billion that was transacted during the same time period in the previous year. He said, our growth is almost all outside the United States. I think that will probably persist until we get the clarity and certainty in the U.S. we have been seeking. What do you think? Is he right? And, every day, new documents are filed in the never-ending legal battle between the United States regulatory body and the fintech company. However, there is one trait that keeps aligning with or following the same pattern, the Security and Exchange Commission efforts to postpone the case. This time, 
it was the same as any other. Well, John Deaton submitted an application for a MICA status on the 21st of May, which gave him the power to represent about 67,000 XRP investors in the ongoing legal conflict. The filing ensured a thorough and comprehensive presentation of the problem, assisting the court in reaching a fair decision. Despite this, the Security and Exchange Commission was going to dispute this, and so it has. However, they requested yet another delay in order to continue with the application. But what is the reason this time? Notably, a well-known attorney named James Filan posted on Twitter the news that the Commission had asked for an extension until June 7th and that the request had been granted. Well, to file an objection to a MICAI request to participate in briefing regarding the expert challenge by defendant. James Filan tweeted, saying, the Security and Exchange Commission has filed a motion for extension of time until June 7, 2022, to file an objection to a MICAI request to participate in briefing regarding the expert challenge. The Securities and Exchange Commission had asked for the previously mentioned extension from Judge Annalisa Torres in order to accommodate the upcoming holiday as well as other briefing deadlines. In addition, the attorneys for the Ripple and the Amikai Curie did not raise any objections to the request, which suggests that the court would grant it. Ripple said in response that, defendants have informed the commission that they have no objection to this extension request, as long as the commission agrees that any response by defendants would be due by Friday, June 10th. This response was brought to light as a reaction to the testimony of expert commission witness Patrick Duty, whose report tried to explain what led XRP holders to acquire the token. It makes sense or not? What do you say? Well, not really, especially to the XRP holders. For instance, one of the users, in the same tweet thread question commission motive. Why would the commission file an objection to trying to prevent the investors they are supposed to protect from participating in the lawsuit? Something is very strange with this. While some people voiced concerns about the Securities and Exchange Commission and its top executive, Gary Gensler, in relation to their plans to safeguard retail investors. A number of people even resorted to Twitter to express their disapproval over the judge decision to grant so many requests for an extension on the deadline. However, Deaton inquired into or rather attempted to manage the potentially volatile scenario. In the tweet John Deaton said that, I am well aware of the frustration XRP holders have regarding extensions, but please understand it would have looked very poorly, and without consequence, for me to object when the parties are in agreement. Make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video. Kindly note that the prices of cryptocurrencies frequently change, so by the time you watch this video, it might have changed to a whole new value. The information provided in this video does not constitute investment advice, financial advice, trading advice, or any other sort of advice, and you should not treat any of the content as such. The content in this video is for educational purposes only and hence should not be considered financial advice. Do conduct your due diligence and consult your financial advisor before making any investment decisions.